So, <coughs> so I thank uh, Song Jin and Tom for giving me a chance to even talk here. Today I'm going to talk about uh, infrared bright galaxies and galaxy surveys. <coughs> so before I start my talk, probably many of you already know about <coughs> this website. So we put all the material bank data out for this NEP-wide field. And then you can see, you can uh, start uh, from this web page to what kinds of data we, are, uh, we can use. And thanks to uh, help from many of you. So, probably many of you are familiar with this kind of a large scale structures. This is a, the uh, uh, CFA grade work from CFA, CFA 2 Reserve Survey. And this is Swan grade work from uh, CFA uh, SS Survey. So, So it's the same scale so for Sloan, like I was involved in the, a, 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 another survey which is called the map, the same scale, so you can clearly see the, how large scale structures evolve uh, with time. So this is called the map and there, is another, uh, there are other surveys, it's called f one f 2 to study the large scale structures. And then so I, one of my a job was to make a kind of logo for the surveys so in this case we are interested in comparing uh, the largest case structures between observations and simulations. So one is the con diagram from an observation and the other one is the con diagram from simulation. So um, to can do a statistical comparison between the two. Then we even made a mock. So if you come to kiosk, not Kazi, so you can get uh, some mocks there. So we also, I also made a log for the another simulation which is called the Mercuryverse. Multiverse uh, consists of five different uh, universes with different cosmological parameters to study the, the dark energy or other stuff. So anyway, the question is: so uh, using this uh, rest survey data and also the simulation data, so they can do cosmology uh, study that definitely study cosmology. But other than the cosmology, what can we do with this data in the study of galaxy formation and evolution? So one simple uh, solution or way to do is to combine this data with other wavelength data, including a uh, infrared and some millimeter, uh, to study many things. So today I'm going to talk about the two things. The first one is the redshift survey, and then the CO survey. So let's talk about the redshift survey. And speaking of redshift survey, there is a good example of combination of redshift and infrared surveys. Actually, there was a nice work by Tomo in 2005. So the idea is we can combine the two catalogs, one from the IRAS, and the other one uh, from the many recent surveys, including Sloan and 2DF and 6DF. And then, by combining these two, we can easily identify the lobes and hyperlobes. So, actually, this became the, my first paper when I was a great student. And then, so some people might ask, why not simply using photometric redshifts instead of spectroscopic redshifts? So, yes, definitely we can use photometric redshifts. But there are several, there are many science cases that the only spectroscopic uh, redshift can provide. For example, there are many things, then let's go uh, uh, one by one, let's talk about one by one. The first one is the uh, galaxy properties in the cosmic graph. So here, the, this is another cone diagram in the F1, F2 field. So the, as a function redshift, so the, uh, this panel is uh, for red galaxies divided by the, their different thousand, different optical spectra. And then this, these are blue galaxies, and again from uh, the uh, D4000, and these are for uh, the total sample of the galaxies. You can clearly see how blue and red galaxies are distributed differently uh, in, the, uh, in the cosmic web that you know. But now, if you make a similar plot but based on photometric redshifts, so in this case, I just the, I made the fake uh, the uh, photometric catalog, just uh, in this case, the uh, sigma z, uh, delta z is 0.1. So you don't see any uh, the, the large scale structure, right? So meaning that, of course, you can, clear, you can still uh, study the galaxy properties statistically, but it's very difficult to study the galaxy properties as a function of cosmic web, okay? That's one thing. <coughs> the second thing is the, the galaxy galaxy interaction, which is very important for the, uh, the galaxy evolution. So in this case, so the y axis is the specific stop point rates of galaxies as a function of distance to nearest neighbors. So the question is how your stop motion activity change uh, through the interaction of your neighbors. So this can be done with, uh, with spectral relationships. So here the blue uh, symbol is for the case when your neighbor is late type galaxy and the, oldest, uh, the, oldest, the red symbol is for the case 
uh, when your uh, the neighbor is uh, all the time move to the all the galaxy. So you clearly see there is a, a, a difference, meaning that depending on the type, the type of neighbor, your stuff may uh, stuff activity can change, which means like, so when the pair separation is smaller than one video radius, you start to interact hydrodynamically. So because of dif because of different hydrodynamic interactions, uh, your the stuff activity can different can be different. This is for the case for the local universe, and if you do the similar analysis, but the, for high redshift galaxies, you can still see such a trend. So this can be done uh, with spectral redshifts. And then the third one could be the, you can combine the optical spectral features with uh, the infrared properties. For example, here the y-axis is infrared luminosity as a function of redshifts. This is for the y 20 microjected galaxies in uh, one of the redshift spheres, F2. So if you just uh, select galaxies in this way, you can make many boxes, and then you can stack the optical spectra uh, in each box. So these are stacked spectra for each box. So you can clearly, uh, and here you can clearly see the difference. So you can study, for example, how the optical, uh, the, how emission line properties or optical line properties change as a function of infrared luminosity or as a function of redshift, right? So this can be a unique combination between a optical spectra and infrared uh, a data. Okay. So now if you uh, make a plot, so there are many redshift surveys um, in the world. So y-axis is the number of spectra per square degree, so the number density, how dense the redshift survey is as a function of area of the, uh, the survey. So here are the hectome and F2, these are the surveys that I talked about. And if you wide, if you just use the current redshift, redshift data that you have, this will go here. So meaning that for a given area, the number density of the spectra is quite low compared to the surveys, you can improve. So I'll talk about later, more about it. And then anyway, I hope you, for not until now, I hope you to be convinced by the importance of the redshift surveys in deep years, including NDPY. Now let's talk about the CO survey. It's probably what you must be familiar with this kind of concept now. The y-axis is stopping its rates as a function of stellar mass. And you can most galaxies for in this main sequence region. And some galaxies for in the starburst region. So you can, you can uh, see there are two types of galaxies, stopping galaxies. And this distinction you can easily find a any redshift. So in this case, uh, the the curve shows a, the main sequence for different redshifts, so you can clearly see the, how the main sequence uh, evolves with redshifts, and then uh, evolves with redshifts. So anyway, the point, uh, the point is galaxies on the main sequence uh, contribute 90% uh, of star formation, and then it, which means the duty cycle on the main sequence are very high. Which means the, the, uh, the catastrophic events like a major merger it cannot be the main agent responsible for uh, the regulating star formation. So this a, a underscores the importance of main sequence galaxies. Okay. And then there could be many related questions about the main sequence and starburst. So among many, the first one would be the are they really morphologically different? So the basic idea is probably if people think through the mergers and interactions, probably the galaxies in the main sequence can be starburst galaxies. Right? So here the y-axis is specific stopping rates as a function of redshift and the, the galaxies with different a, interaction stages are color coded by uh, different symbols. So these are the main sequence and the galaxy, uh, the, those are uh, starburst galaxies. So you can clearly see that the, in the starburst region there are many a, mergers interactions. And consistent with the, uh, the expectation, and you can have a, 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 a you can see you can uh, study this uh, trend uh, in a different way. So y-axis in this case is specific stopping rate of galaxies compared to the field galaxies, just so isolated galaxies. So the galaxies in blue region would be the uh, main sequence, and the galaxies above would be starburst galaxies. For so so the symbol indicates for the case of galaxies with late time neighbors, so within the video radius. So when galaxies are interacting, as you saw before, their stop point rate will be increased up to this region. And this is true even for high-rest galaxies, which means the galaxies that are interacting 
they are starburst galaxy, right? So this is again consistent with our expectations, right? So the the Eunbin uh, team has been working on uh, uh, this topic, so she will talk about a more about details for the data that we have for NDP wide field. Okay. So the, the another question would be, for example, how about the uh, the Asian rule in this a star forming galaxy in star forming galaxies main sequence? So that you can ask <coughs> where we can find more agents. Uh, between the starburst and main sequence, I'll skip this because uh, I have no time. If you have a question, I can uh, show you more. So you can add, ask another question, for example, why is the role of bars in these a starburst mode, uh, star formation mode? So whether the bar triggers star formation or the bar uh, suppresses the star formation. So this can this work also done by the Umbian. So I'll skip this one as well. So. So far, so the question would be what makes and what causes uh, the difference between starburst and main sequence galaxies. We think as we get, interaction uh, can be uh, one cause. And the another way we can think about is so here the y axis is star function rate, as a function of stellar mass, and the color coded by their a cold gas, in this case the H1 gas fraction. So you can clearly see for a given stellar mass, H1 gas fraction increases with star function rate. Okay? So you can make a similar plot, but in this case uh, with molecular gas fraction. So again, for a given stellar mass, the H gas uh, fraction increases with a star point rate, right? So which means cold gas really plays an important role in, in determining the star formation mode. So which means we must improve our understanding of the properties of cold ISM across the entire galaxy population. So that's why actually we have been doing a survey which is called Jingle. Zingle is a large uh, survey program uh, with JCMT, the JCMT legacy survey of dust and gas for extragalactic studies. And then, if I explain more, so Zingle has uh, roughly uh, 800 hours of survey time, and there are two types of observations. One is for uh, uh, the dust continuum observation with SCUBA 2, and the other one is the CU observation with RxA. So now the detector was changed with the uh, Namakanui. So, anyway, so there are two types of observations. So from this AC observation, so we would like to study gas properties, which include a star formation and stuff in history of a, a total gas reservoir. And for a scuba two observation, we would like to study dust properties. And then by combining these two, we would like to study some like scaling, scaling relations between the two. So the why is it important? Because if you want to um, if you want to measure, let's say, the uh, gas content, amount of gas in high rest galaxies. So even ARMA is very expensive observation if you want to observe the Z equal uh, four or five galaxies. So one thing we can easily do is of using this scaling relation. So y axis is zero luminosity, and x axis a a fifty mi a fifty micron the dust uh, luminosity. So you can make good uh, this, uh, this kind of scaling relations. So just by uh, just from the observation of dust continuum, we can easily pr uh, predict a CO luminosity or dust uh, the uh, gas mass. So which means we really need to a, a calibrate this scaling uh, relation very well. So that's why we want to a the calibrate this scaling relation with Jingle uh, survey. That's one of the uh, important goals. So again, I hope you to be convinced by the importance of CO surveys in deep fields, including NDPY. Okay? So that then the question is what we can do uh, for the NDPY deep field. So for the redshift survey, so, so for now, if I, if I collect all the redshift uh, survey data for NDP Y field, here uh, the y axis is special properties as a function of 20 micron uh, uh, Atari luminosity. So it can overall the component is 24 person only. So, of course, the, there will be a, a, a CAC observation soon, the CAC data will help. But if I make a spectral completeness plot as a function of RA and DAG, you can clearly how noisy uh, they are, right? So if you plot a the special uh, if you make a, uh, a plot them the red points are the 20 micro detected sources with major redshifts and the black points are any 20 micro objects. So the idea is we can make it we can uh, do uh, the observation. So this is a another cone diagram. In this case, and for any PD field, the so black points are the galaxies with major redshifts and the red points are the uh, 20 micro detected sources. The question is we want to study let's say the environment of 20 micro detected galaxies in the cosmic web, but it's very difficult to do for now. So we need more redshifts to uh, 
So to, to do that, so we can wait until the hyper uh, the Subaru PFS is available. But uh, before we, before but for now the event hyper space is available. It also has one degree diameter field of view. Fortunately, and this is very good for wide field survey. Fortunately, Korea uh, uh, we have uh, some access until 2021. So. So uh, my idea is we uh, plan to submit a proposal to do a special unit from that's the key. So to study a something like the environment of galaxies, a down to any magnitude that we want to plan, and then this can be useful for many way, many ways, including galaxy environment and other studies, I guess. That's one thing. And about the gas content, as you probably some of uh, have received the emails from the JCMT. So this, there will be a special supplement core only for uh, South Korean uh, people. So we can probably uh, think about a pilot field survey, some bright galaxies <coughs> in the into wide field. And Hyunjin Shim kindly agree to a uh, meet uh, this a uh, special uh, proposal. And then next one is a the large pro uh, as in the large program core. So we can think about a systematic CO survey. A, uh, in the NDP wide, uh, wide, uh, wide field, and then the question would be how many target galaxies we can discuss more, and we need someone to uh, lead this proposal. So, because uh, like of time, so anyway, I'd like to amplify the two things: the combination of the redshift and the surveys, and also the study of the, uh, gas properties. So I stop here. Thank you. The slide which had the, the early slide, which showed the redshift uh, coverage as per square degree, mm -hmm. and it was very interesting. But it, that's the previous. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. So we we are very deficient on that compared to deep two C knock everybody. Yeah. So it we there's no point in our just repeating the same science that they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just pointless. But you say that with uh, hecto spec and then. I guess in future PFS we can get like order of magnitude more. So the usually, yeah, ten yeah, thousand. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we should uh, the order should be something like a thousand. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, there's the order should be ten thousand. We have three thousand. Yeah. For now, you have the uh, the total number of redshifts for now. So it's it's, it's twenty five hundred. Uh, okay. Twenty five hundred. So you want to go order of magnitude? Exactly. Above. Exactly. Yeah. Because the and have to spec, we can observe, we can get roughly 250 rushes per field mm -hmm. with one hour, something like that. So, okay, so you want to have about 50 hours, 40 hours? Uh, yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, yeah, so it can be a long term survey. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Mm. Okay, thank you. And, and you just want, it's going to go really fast because you really don't want to go fainter than 20th. No, 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 yeah. So, really, mostly. Mostly fairly low redshifts, mm -hmm. unless you specifically target for objects you think are at a redshift exactly, of one yeah, or more. Yeah, that's right, yeah. If you really prioritize, but that's right, yeah. But as I said, the focus is to make a the, the make, have the special uniform data set. Okay. Thank you. I just wonder what is our status for the PFS survey. Do you know anybody? Mm. PFS survey. Yes. We should have some plan for the PFS one. Yes, that's what Sunni is going to talk about. I mean, we have to <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be very busy. Um, I could talk about uh, PFS. Uh, I was going to focus my talk on imaging, uh, but I can also I also can also talk a bit about PFS. Well, I guess what was the question? Was was the status of PFS? Mm -hmm. In in NAP. That's that's the item for discussion session no. today. I don't know. I, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, the, the NAP field was not included a HS a uh, SUP KFS SSP field, right? It's, it's not. not it's not. No. Uh, so which means we have to submit a separate proposal. Okay. Uh, which can be a good thing. Yeah. We can get data quick earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Oh, so. <laughs> About, about the CO product survey, can you tell us more about what's the plan? How, I don't know, how many objects, how the... So we haven't, uh, we haven't had any uh, numbers yet. Oh. So this is just the, a, a, I just wanted to uh, bring a, 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 probably it could be a good discussion topic. So 
Tenjin probably will do some calculation just for pilot survey. <laughs> pilot survey, and then probably you have a better idea how to make a, a large program. Uh, I just I tell her this morning, so. <laughs> so <laughs> okay.